Hello everybody, we are back and we're on experiment 20. And uh, as you can tell, I bought a bunch of jumper wires, uh, mainly because it was getting to be a little bit tedious to wire some of these projects up because the uh, number of wires has uh, skyrocketed. So um, this may make it a little difficult from the top down view to see what's going on, uh, mainly because it just looks like a spider's nest of wires but I will do my best to give a brief overview. Uh, there's truly almost no way to express uh, the complexity of this circuit. Um, I can kind of walk through the main pins that I'm focused on on this project and what it's all about, but before I do that, I will briefly show, I guess uh, from a sideways view, what the circuit looks like for this guy. Maybe I can fit it in upright, let's see here just to kind of get a brief idea of what the schematic looks like. So you guys can just kind of pause the screen and look at that for a brief moment. Like that. So with that being uh, said, um, if you pause that and look at it for a bit, you'll see that we've got uh, a couple different logic chips uh, in play here, namely uh, this first one here is the 74HC08, and it's basically a quad AND gate chip. And the one below it is the 74HC04, uh, which I believe is just a quad inverter chip. So if you pass a uh, negative signal in, you get back a positive signal. Uh, likewise, pass a positive in, you get a negative out. So pretty straightforward. And of course, our uh, our dear friend the 555, and in this case, um, you know we are uh, running in. Let's see, this is uh, mono stable mode, so uh, that's the single pulse mode. And uh, it might be hard to tell from here, but if you look really closely, you can see that there is a little bridge right there that's bridging the. Uh, pins uh, 6 and 7 of our 555, which is a pretty typical telltale of which mode we're running in. Um, and of course the fact that there's no wire bridging uh, pins 2 and 6, which is usually the uh, A-stable mode. What else? Component-wise we've got this guy, and he is, <clears throat> excuse me, he is a uh, dual latch relay. And uh, this guy proved a little troublesome to me because um, I will be I will be able to demo this this circuit in its entirety. However, this relay I think is burned out, <laughs> but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I do have a second one that I just dropped on the circuit, of course. Um, this guy, uh, if you look really closely, the pin legs on him are somewhat short and they're actually uh, I would say a couple millimeters shorter than the ones that are um, plugged into the uh, board here with this guy and in fact these are so short that it won't actually snap into my breadboard so I'm not able to use it uh, unless I actually were to put this in a perf board and solder it into place or try to try to clip some uh, some alligator leads onto this thing, but they're very short, uh, so I'm not sure I want to try that out, and they're very close together. In fact, the uh, pins that correspond to the coils are right next to each other, so it's a very tight space to work with if you were to put some clips on there. Um, so, I've got one that in theory works, and one that in theory is uh, probably burnt out, either because I fried it, uh, when well, I will explain how, or it came busted. So, uh, for those who order the kits from Makershed, either they're shipping burnt out ones uh, of these, which I doubt that, everything else has been pretty spot on, um, or the more likely scenario is I burnt out the relay that had the long enough pin legs on it. Um, and the reason for that uh, was because the book shows the coils being on opposing ends of the relay. And while that may or may not be true, the pin legs uh, for this specific model, if you look up the data sheet online, first 
<laughs> uh, show that the pin legs that, con that control the coils are next to each other at one end of the relay. So I think what ended up happening was the very first time I got this circuit working, I ran uh, the 5 volts through uh, pins that were not supposed to receive 5 volts. So, anyways, hopefully that explains how I may or may not have fried this guy. But he's in place just for good form. So, the goal of this circuit, uh, I guess the camera is oriented the other way around, so you'll have to read the numbers upside down. Sorry about that, guys. Um, the goal of this circuit is to be able to type in a combination and, uh, in fact, unlock, you know, or activate uh, the uh, device that would be powered when the relay goes on. And until you lock the uh, mechanism with the, you know, your locking code, or in this case, locking is just pushing pound to relock, uh, once you do that, uh, the relay would latch back the other way and depower the device and uh, this light would light up. So I guess let me speak to these lights. So yeah, in order to enter the code uh, with this pad, given the configuration we have, you have to hold down the star the whole time you type your code. And when you hold down the star, this light lights up. And when you key in the right combination, uh, this green LED over here lights up which is covered by wires, of course. And then when you're done with that, uh, you can let go of the code, of course, and your device will be activated because power will be running to it through the relay. And then when you want to lock it up, you push pound, and power cuts off on the relay. And when you pushed it, that guy went uh, red again to show you that you armed your, uh, armed your circuit again, or locked it, if you will. So this is kind of like a something you might see on a typical, you know, home security system, or in the book's case, they're, <laughs> they're recommending you take a saw to your computer uh, tower if you still have an old school desktop tower lying around, and you, you basically tap into the, 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 the line between the power button on your case and the uh, uh, line that runs to the motherboard to, to turn on the, the whole, whole uh, computer. So until you type in your code and green light goes hot, power runs through the relay, you wouldn't be able to actually push the power button physically. I wouldn't like send a pulse to turn on the computer. So for those who don't want to have software protection but prefer hardware and have a hacksaw and the will to cut open their computer, uh, this is a circuit for you. So I'm going to turn this on and uh, bring us up to 5 volts and we'll see what happens. And hopefully it's exactly what I said, otherwise this will be a failed uh, demo video. Okay, we are at 5 volts, and 5 volts exactly for these picky logic chips. So, uh, what do we do here? Uh, what we were saying before, actually let me just turn the, I'm going to turn the overhead light off for a sec. Make it a little bit easier to hopefully see the, the LEDs as they light up. So I'll hold down the, uh, the asterisk. So this guy lights up as we see. And we're John, you know, the typical 10 milliamps or so, somewhere in that range. Uh, if I type in some, you know, arbitrary wrong code, nothing ever happens here. Just, you can keep going for eternity. Uh, you let it off and boom, it's like you're starting over again. So, uh, but if you type the right code, which in this case is just going one, four, seven. Green light lit up for a sec there. Let that go. And when the green light lit up, that really means that uh, if you tapped into one of the two latch outputs of this relay, and if the relay weren't completely toast, you would have heard a click. And that would mean that the latch moved one way and opened up the channel so power could fly, uh, you know, flow out of this guy. So if I wanted to arm it again, I would push the pound key, and it would arm it, flip the latch back the other way. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So I could just continue to arm it, whatever, once it's latched, it won't you know, do anything if the latch is already away from one of the coils. And, uh, yeah, I guess that pretty much explains the circuit. Um, I have my Logic Pro hooked up here because I was actually playing around with observing some of the outputs on this. And uh, we can go ahead and do that since this has gone relatively fast. Let me turn this guy back on. Um, 
So there's a few pins that uh, I'll focus on just to kind of give us a clue as to what's going on here. Um, so I'm just looking at the schematic to the side here and uh, the way it's wired up, when you push the one key, uh, assuming you're holding down pound, uh, it's going into the uh, upper left AND gate of the, the first logic chip up here. And the output pin uh, looks to be pin 3. So what I'm going to do is just kind of see if I can... This is kind of difficult with all this stuff on the circuit, but let's see here. So you can see on the camera, if I can hold everything steady, we got, uh, we're low right now on pin 3. If I hold this, we go high. Uh, let me see here, and then I push 1. But now let's say I do 5. So that was like the wrong combo, right? So it just went low again. So let me just take that off for a sec here. I'll rearm it. <laughs> so if I do uh, the asterisk again and I do one again and do four, because I pushed the right combo, as you see, it didn't reset. It's still high. It means I haven't screwed up yet, but if I push like another wrong number, it's like it starts over again. So the goal here is you're kind of building this, uh, you're stacking on these gates, uh, like every time you push another number that's correct, you're essentially going one step through a maze and keeping all the previous gates that you worked your way through, uh, they're, they're, the signal remains high. So you're one step at a time working your way through and if you ever screw up, you have to start all over again. And uh, so in this case, we have a three digit combination, one, four, seven. So as long as we enter that correctly, the pin will stay. Let's see if I can put that down on that again. So, one, four, seven. But if I continue, I like to continue like a four digit code, all of a sudden it was like, no, that's wrong. So, uh, pin three is the output of the uh, first digit AND gate, so the one, and the four, uh, the output of that gate is pin six. So let's check that guy out without shorting the pins on the chips together, hopefully. So, notice this time, <laughs> when you push the asterisk, nothing's really going on with this guy yet. So I'll push the one, then the four. See how it went high? So now we're on the, we're just showing that the output of the second uh, gate uh, is happy with uh, what we've pushed and we've made it that far. But again, if we deviate and go, you know, use the wrong code, we fall off the beaten path again. And the output pin of the third and final number for this combination uh, our seven, the output uh, of our gate is pin eight of that guy. So he would be right here. So one, four, seven. And you saw it flickered and then it was done. That was pretty much it. So, uh, when the gate flickered, it sent out a, a high pulse temporarily, and that went through the inverter gate, or A inverter gate, of this logic chip down below. So that became a, a low pulse, which connected to the trigger pin of our 555. And when the trigger pin of our 555 was uh, set to low, uh, that caused the green LED to light up. And also, if the relay weren't burnt out, would have sent the power through the coil to make the latch move. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So, I would say uh, if you do this project, um, definitely expect it to take more time to build than to explain. Definitely.
Uh, that's pretty much all there is, and uh, I think there are no enhancements uh, that I'm going to demo in a video for this guy. There's a couple, you know, verbal recommendations and such to improve it a little bit. Uh, otherwise, uh, on to Experiment 21, and uh, I guess, yeah, that's it. So, see y'all then.